Beeper, Minnie, what, what happened? What, it's not working. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you Frankie. Thought look, you listen, could this stop is us. It's an issue on Beeper's servers, okay? It's not anything Apple did. How about you just take a step back and literally screw your Frankie, own I, servers? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You think you can go against me and Timmy Cook, okay? You think you can pretend you're an iPhone? You think you can break into the iMessage protocol? No, I am talking score to earth, all right? Apple is going to shut you down. We will never let you in. iMessage is exclusive only for I'm iPhones. Sorry. I don't care what the EU says. I don't care what Beeper Mini comes up with. We are going to fight back and we are going to okay. mess you okay. up. Okay. At, at least I can still sign in via Apple ID, though. That works. Just get out of here. Oh, God. <laughs> don't mess with Timmy. Well, that didn't last long. Yes, while Beeper Mini was able to find a way to reverse engineer iMessage and somehow do it in a legal way, I guess, Apple found a way to quickly break it. And so far, it seems like they didn't have to break iMessage for any older iPhones. Everything is still working. Beeper Mini was clever, but Apple was even more cleverer. Apple even issued a statement saying, yes, that was us. It's not just Beeper Mini. And Beeper said they were working on it, trying to reverse engineer it again and get it working. A lot of people said it still wasn't working, but now basically it is back, it is free, they're not going to charge two bucks a month anymore, but it's no longer as special as it used to be. Basically now it's relying on you signing into an Apple ID, which of course means that all of your Apple information is signed into some emulated Mac somewhere on a server, which is weird because the website is still claiming that it doesn't require you to sign in via Apple ID, but I think long term they're going to keep playing this game of cat and mouse, right? They're going to keep trying to find a way to break into iMessage so that they can get all of those features without having an Apple ID to sign into and basically Apple has decided violence. Okay, we're not going to fight this via the form of competition like let's bring our own iMessage app to Android. They're just gonna say no, nope, you're breaking the rules and because you're not a device we're required to prioritize, we're gonna find a way to break you no matter how many different ways you code it. Now a lot of people were arguing about this online but I have to say I kind of side with the masses here. This this is Apple's servers. This is Apple's own protocol. This is their own service that they provide to their users for free, assuming that they're buying any particular Apple product. Basically, Beeper Mini is creating more bandwidth. It's trying to profit off of a service that they themselves do not own. So morally and legally, basically, Apple is totally in the right here, in my opinion. Like, yes, it would be cool if there was an iMessage Android app and people could remain as blue bubbles and Apple could actually be a threat to Meta with WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. If Apple had their own cross-platform messaging service, that would be very cool, and I'm not against that, but Apple has to do it on their own terms, basically. I want Apple to choose to bring iMessage to Android. I don't think they should just basically allow third parties to continue reverse engineering their service and then capitalize on it. If anybody should be making money from iMessage on Android, it should be Apple, okay? That way, they can kind of justify the additional upkeep and the additional server bandwidth that is going to be consumed by non-iPhones, basically non-Apple customers, utilizing an Apple service, the best way to compensate would be basically you have to sign up for an iCloud Plus plan if you're on Android, and if you're on an iPhone, you don't. And I don't think it should be very expensive, at best like a dollar a month, maybe even less than that. But I hope this is giving Apple a lot of time to think, you know, do they want to continue playing this game with Sunrise and Beeper where they're like, oh no, you can't do that, you can't do that, guys, stop it, stop it. Or instead, could they realize that the longer term, even easier way to shut down all of these iMessage clones that keeps popping up is just literally bring iMessage to Android, which it sounds like the EU is going to be forcing them to do anyway. Apple's going to fight it along the way, but I would say get ahead of this. It feels like the future is not going to be having too many software services exclusive to just your hardware. And Apple's already caved in this regard in many ways. You don't have to buy an Apple TV to watch Apple TV+. Plus. You don't have to buy an iPhone or a Mac just to use Apple Music music. And those are kind of two of Apple's biggest, like, most popular subscription services. TV Plus and Apple Music. I guess iCloud in there as well, which technically you could get through a PC just through signing up on the web, but I think the long-term future, if Apple wants to be looked at as more of a services company, is to basically look at what your highest demand services are and find a way to monetize them in some way, shape, or form. And Apple tends to be more about that membership than they do just putting free with ads on stuff. So I would say 
say, like, you could shut all of this down, Apple, if you just gave the people what they wanted. An iMessage option for Android. No, it doesn't necessarily have to be free, but that would certainly cripple all of the business models of these other companies, which are basically just trying to capitalize on the idea that you could have iMessage on a non-Apple device, rather than just do this bickering back and forth of, ah, we fixed it. Oh, no, you didn't. Ah, we did again. Because this could go on endlessly, honestly. Beeper Mini might find a way to recreate the protocol all over again, and then Apple will find a way to break it all over again. So I'm not going to make a video every single time the situation changes. But my running thesis here that I'm just going to keep pushing is that I think Apple should bring an iMessage app to Android, or even bring like an option to use iMessage on the web if you're on a PC, and that would literally give Meta a run for their money, which I'm all in favor of. Apple's already going up against the metaverse with spatial computing and the Apple Vision Pro. You tried to shoot down all of their app tracking and that tanked their stock. Apple seems to love messing with Facebook and I'm all here for it because I don't like them very much. So let's keep this battle going. Let's make a cross-platform accessible messaging platform so that a lot of people aren't forced to use WhatsApp all the time. And along the way, Apple can uh, make a little bit of money while they're at it, right? I ran some polls on this and it definitely does not seem that bringing iMessage to Android would convince that many people to switch away from iPhone. In the tech community, I hear this all the time. People are like, oh, they don't want to bring iMessage to Android because then people won't feel the need to keep using an iPhone anymore. I think there's a lot of reasons people keep using iPhones. They like the UI. They like the simplicity of iOS. They like the ecosystem with the AirDrop and having an Apple ID password that kind of controls everything. And I don't think that would suddenly all change if there was an iMessage version on Android. At least that's what the tech community is saying. And I think the everyday consumer is even less likely to switch because switching ecosystems is a big pain in the butt. Most people just want to keep using what they're used to using. So I imagine our little tech bubble showing that, you know, 80 or 90% of people still wouldn't switch to Android even if there was an iMessage option. In the real world, it's probably more like 95% outside of our tech bubble. So Apple, don't worry about losing market share just by bringing this app to Android. Just focus more on taking away market share from Meta. That's what should matter in the end, right? But what do you guys think Apple should do surrounding this issue? Should they just keep playing whack-a-mole with the iMessage clones or should they bring an iMessage? message version to Android, especially if the EU is going to make them do it anyway. All that good stuff. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. Thanks again. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you all in the next one.